Uh, hi. Does it work? It's on. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrea Pogliaghi, and I'm presenting today a, a European Union founded project called PALS that is uh, about uh, health problems in, uh, in cities. Uh, before I start, just uh, some, uh, a couple of information about my, my company. I work for uh, Genegis GI, that is an Italian company that has been uh, uh, working in uh, the geospatial sector for uh, more than 20, 20 years. Uh, we work with uh, uh, public uh, uh, companies and uh, private uh, uh, customers. We work uh, with both uh, open source and proprietary solution, and we have an extensive uh, experience in projects uh, abroad. Um, so what is PALS? Uh, well, PALS is uh, an acronym that stands for uh, Participatory Urban Living for Sustainable Environments and uh, it is an European uh, uh, Horizon 2020 project. And uh, uh, well, uh, looking at the terms composing the acronym, you can guess uh, what, the project, uh, what the project is about. It is uh, uh, ELF and uh, in cities with uh, participation, uh, participative, pa participatory approach. Uh, there are uh, 12 partners involved. Uh, we are one of those. We are a private company, but in the consortium there are uh, university um, research institutes and uh, um, public, public agencies. Uh, the, the project uh, is uh, implemented in Europe, uh, North America, and uh, Asia. Uh, the objective of PULSE is, uh, in general, that of building uh, an extensible set of uh, tools, technologies, uh, and, uh, well, tools and models to be able to uh, manage some kind of uh, um, public, uh, public health problems in, in cities and uh, it employs a uh, participatory uh, citizen approach, meaning that the citizens themselves can uh, collect data and send data to the system. Uh, this data is uh, re related to their health status, their position, their movements, uh, information about their, their well-being and, and so on, and they receive uh, information from the, from the public health uh, agencies. Uh, there, there are uh, a lot of data that are involved in the project, data coming from uh, uh, well, the, the, the citizen, data coming from uh, data, uh, data sources of the cities, uh, and uh, also from, uh, from sensors, satellites, and uh, uh, monitoring stations. Uh, from the clinic clinical point of view, the project concentrates on two aspects that are uh, the asthma, and the relationship of asthma with uh, the atmospheric pollution and the type 2 diabetes and its relationship with the physical activity. Uh, the project is being experimented in, uh, in five cities uh, that are Barcelona, Paris, Birmingham, New York, Singapore, and recently also Pavia in Italy and the Keelong in uh, Taiwan uh, joined the, the, the pilots. Okay, well, the project is, uh, is big, uh, but the, um, we can divide the components in th those uh, four uh, pieces that are, one is uh, an app, a mobile app called P Pulse Air that is being uh, developed by the University of, uh, of Madrid. And uh, the app is responsible of collecting the data from, from the citizen uh, through uh, GPS, questionnaires, uh, um, and, uh, well, the movements of the user. And uh, the, the app provides to the user information about their health risk, the output of uh, the clinical models, and, uh, and so on. And it tries to, let's say, induce, uh, induce uh, uh, change behavior in the citizen uh, based on uh, some gaming lodging and, um, well, um, contexts and, and so on. The data is acquired also, uh, well, from the app and also from uh, wearable sensors. Uh, Fitbit data that uh, send to the system information about uh, some biometric parameters. Uh, another component of the, the system is the, let's say, the most, uh, let's say, scientific part that is that of models. So there are um, clinical models to provide an estimate of asthma and type 2 diabetes onset, and uh, some models related to uh, air quality. 
and uh, to the personal exposure of the citizen. The personal exposure is uh, in some way the estimation of the, let's say, pollutant that the user, that the citizen is, is exposed to during his, uh, his day life, his daily life. Uh, another part of the system is is related, related to the visualization of the data. So there is a WebGIS and there is a, a dashboard that provides analytics and uh, monitoring uh, functionalities to, to, to the system. Uh, this is the, uh, general, uh, the system general architecture that uh, shows the components as I, that I um, just said. Uh, so basically the, the monitoring and analytics dashboard, the, the, the app, uh, the backend services with the pulse models and the WebGIS that uh, provides visualization but also provide, um, let's say, services to the different uh, components that are related with uh, geo, geo, geo data. Uh, uh, for regarding the the Pulsar app, uh, as I said, it, it collects uh, data coming from GPS uh, questionnaires that uh, the user is uh, prompt to, uh, to fill in about their behavior, lifestyle, health status, and the data coming from Fitbit. Um, the app provides estimation on the uh, health risk of the citizen, and uh, as I said before, it tries to uh, promote habits to improve health, well-being, and uh, good uh, behavior, let's say. These are some uh, screenshots of the app. Uh, just some, some examples. Uh, you can see uh, there, there, there are uh, maps showing the air quality, information about the air quality index, uh, tips that the user is, uh, is given, uh, the questionnaires that uh, is uh, prompt to uh, fill in, and, uh, and so on. Um, okay, well, uh, regarding the, mm, the models, as I said, there are uh, clinical models that uh, estimate the onset of asthma and type 2 diabetes that, uh, that are being developed by University of Padova. I will not uh, uh, say anything about that. Uh, and there are models for uh, the air quality um, estimation and the calculation of personal exposure. I, I will concentrate on uh, the, the personal exposure and I will just say that uh, uh, for the air quality models, uh, there are, uh, I mean, the data that are used are uh, coming from uh, both uh, monitoring stations and, uh, um, and satellite data. Uh, there is also a, a part of the project that is related to uh, the, uh, the heat island effect that you have in cities. So the fact that in summer especially, some parts of the city gets uh, warmer than other, than, than the surrounding areas and uh, some of the pilot cities were interested in having some uh, procedure to in some way calculate uh, the, those uh, uh, urban heat islands automatically. Uh, so I, I will go very fast with these two slides. This is an example of uh, some air quality uh, maps that are derived from uh, MODIS uh, satellite data. This is work done by University of Pavia and uh, some uh, uh, well information about uh, a procedure for the land surface temperature to, um, to assess the urban heat island effect. Uh, yes, I would like to concentrate on the, the personal exposure and on the, uh, the experimentation that has been done in the project to uh, create a dense air, um, air quality monitoring network. Uh, because uh, um, the data, the monitoring station available in, uh, in some cities were very uh, few, so they didn't uh, provide the, uh, let's say, the information that were needed for, uh, uh, for, for the project, meaning that uh, they were very, uh, very few. This, this slide, for example, um, shows the situation in Pavia, where you can see the red dots showing the official environmental protection agency of, uh, of Pavia, that basically there are just two, only two monitoring stations. So uh, there were um, other uh, low cost sensors that were uh, deployed in the test pilot in order to uh, densify this network. And the result is the entire image. So you have also the green and yellow dots. Um, so in this way, uh, we could have uh, well, more data with uh, uh, higher frequency and uh, also a denser, um, let's say, uh, I mean, there are, there are many more, so it's, uh, it's denser. 
and this allows uh, to well to have more data and also to be able to perform uh, some uh, uh, personal exposure estimation. The personal exposure, as I as I mentioned before, is the is um, let's say um, a way to uh, measure to estimate the amount of pollution or pollutant that uh, an individual is exposed to, and uh, uh, the, the the fact that the, the network is dense uh, allows to have uh, well data that can be used to model this. Uh, the, the frequency of the measurements are quite high, uh, and uh, those uh, sensors are uh, affordable because they, they are uh, cheap. It's like uh, around 200 euro each. So um, the, the, the way this uh, uh, model works basically is, is like that. Uh, the information about one parameter are, are collected. Those are averaged each hour and those are interpolated. So you have uh, one surface as the one on the upper right corner. Uh, this uh, um, interpolation is, is made every hour. So at the end, you have a set of uh, surfaces like uh, in, the, in, in that uh, image. So uh, taking the uh, information about the movements of the user, those could be classified in, uh, well, in, this, in three classes, for example. And according to some information uh, found in the literature, uh, it's possible to uh, well calculate or estimate the amount of uh, pollutant in this case, in this example, a PM10 that uh, this user uh, in some way inhaled during his uh, his, uh, his daily uh, pattern. He left home. He went to uh, work. Then he went. Uh, to lunch, then he went to, meet, to a meeting, came back home, and then he ran, and the, he nailed around 24 micrograms of PM10. This is uh, uh, a working progress uh, model, and also this uh, is being uh, uh, developed by University of Pavia. Uh, regarding the WebGIS module, well, it is uh, a part of the system that allows to show the, the data. Uh, and also to pro it provides geospatial services to the other components of the project. Uh, there was one WebGIS that was defined for each pilot cities, and the data inside the WebGIS are, well, satellite data, data from the monitoring stations, but also data coming from different sources like uh, urban, uh, urban data, urban subdivision, public health data, data coming from hospitals, uh, and so on. Uh, the WebGIS has uh, uh, well some uh, different functionalities. Some of them are, uh, let's say, basic and standard uh, that you normally find find in, uh, in in traditional in the in the WebGIS. But also some other functionalities that are specific, more advanced, specific for uh, for Pulse. Uh, among the basic functionalities, you have uh, well the, the the table of content, the scale, base map selector, uh, the legend, the possibility to query the well query the feature, see the attribute table, uh, plot charts on the value of some attributes of the attribute table, and so on, print, measure, and and so on. Uh, the interesting feature for uh, Pulse were the, are the, the fact that it's possible to navigate the data in time. So it's possible to load a time series of data and with a time manager, a, time, um, a widget, it's possible to uh, see how a phenomena is changing in time. And it's also possible to compare, well, to have two sides, one, one beside the other in order to see uh, maybe two different phenomena in the same in the same area or the same phenomena at different times uh, so this is useful to visually correlate the data in this case for example uh, you can see that there is uh, some you, one can guess that there is some correlation between the asthma hospitalizations and the average of pm25 in new york uh, this is just visual but in uh, well in, in the project there are also um, let's say, uh, more advanced uh, analysis, as for example this one that, uh, that shows uh, via geostatistics that there is a correlation between the hospitalization of, uh, um, for asthma with the poverty rate in, uh, in, in New York. Um, 
As I uh, was saying, the, 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 there is a time manager that allows to uh, navigate data in time. It's possible to uh, also define which is the temporal res resolution that one uh, user wants to, wants to have. So if the data is uh, vector data, uh, it, is, it can be aggregated by, uh, for example, daily basis, hourly basis, and, and so on. And uh, a technical side on that, uh, that is uh, uh, how, uh, how it works, we use two approaches to, to, to visualize the temporal data. Basically, there is uh, one logic layer in the table of content that can either be uh, connected to uh, one physical layer in the, well, in the cartographic server, in our case, GeoServer. And so when uh, you change the time and you navigate in time, the, the physical layer that is loaded in the WebGIS is the same, but uh, uh, a SQL temporal filter is applied, so you have basically the data that, that, that gets filtered. And that, that is the approach we, we used for vector data. Whereas for raster data, we use another approach. So we have one logical layer in the table of content that is mapped to n physical layer in GeoServer. So when you move the time, uh, the, the physical la the, uh, different layer is loaded in the WebGIS. The user doesn't notice anything. Uh, and that is the approach that, uh, that we used for, uh, for raster. So basically, each raster data, cor um, each, rast each uh, uh, layer for raster corresponds to a measurement. So as you change the time, different, the, a different layer is loaded. Here you have some examples. You have uh, examples for uh, the, uh, the raster data and the, the vector data. The, the WebJS is backed by a configurator. The, the configurator is a web-based uh, web appli web -based application and uh, that allows to configure almost every aspect of the WebGIS, so it's not needed to write uh, anything, uh, I mean, coding anything. And it, it, that was, it is very useful because it allows to add new data or create a WebGIS for another city without having to do anything. So it's possible to configure a new WebGIS, add maps, add layer, uh, modify the reference system, widgets, do per uh, permissions, uh, and, and so on. One of the also important uh, feature is that of the, of the data loading, meaning that to load the data inside the WebGIS, there is a wizard and a, a workflow, so each operation is uh, automatized. So if I have a shapefile, I can load the shapefile in the system, a new table is created automatically in, in PostGIS, it's published in the system, it's published on GeoServer, and it's validated, and I can publish and unpublish the data uh, the way I want. So it is very uh, useful because, uh, well, it simplifies data loading. Uh, another part of the system is the, uh, uh, the dashboard working environment that it is uh, being developed by another, um, another partner, uh, that, uh, that is Belit. This dashboard is, uh, um, allows to query the data, analyze the data, uh, display charts and diagram, and also it, uh, it, it, uh, it is useful for the, uh, well, man to, to manage the, the pilot uh, cities, meaning that uh, uh, can be used to simplify the recruitment process to recruit the volunteers for testing uh, the, well, the system. And uh, it also has modules for uh, the verifying that all the components of Pulse are, are working. Uh, here there are some screenshots of the dashboard. Uh, I would just like to um, point, um, well, point the attention on, uh, on that part that shows the integration between the dashboard and the WebGIS. Uh, the dashboard is being developed by another company and uh, the WebGIS is another component, so those two components need to talk to each other. And uh, uh, the approach we followed for, uh, for this integration was to have uh, the WebGIS that is integrated in a HTML component, uh, well, an iframe in this case, and this exposes uh, J JavaScript APIs, so the, 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 embed, the embedding page, the parent page, can embed the WebGIS and pilot the WebGIS uh, as, 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 it, as it wants. So turn on, off layer, add layer, change uh, the visualization, and so on. And uh, well, this is 
one part of the of the integration between the WebJS and, and other components. There were other there are other ways the WebJS is used by the other parts. Uh, some component like for, like the Pulse uh, Pulsar app use the data provided by the WebJS accessing directly to the to GeoServer using uh, uh, OGC standard uh, protocols. But there are also web services that are that were made especially for Pulse, for example, to collect the data, um, the positions of the user to make the trajectory, the, the path of, of the user, and so on. Uh, another um, interesting feature that was developed is that of the uh, well, the, the application of a different style on the fly to the system, but uh, with the Mm, let's say added the fact that uh, the parameter uh, that codifies the style can be something that is not in the layer. Uh, I, I explain this better. Uh, in the WebJS, maybe there is a layer, like in that, uh, uh, in this example, that represents. Uh, okay, that represents the uh, district, co the, the, the subdivisions of uh, Barcelona. Then the dashboard, that is something else, uh, may want to represent a generic parameter A. So if I want to style those uh, district codes according to some rules on parameter A, uh, I can express this uh, condition in a, in, a, in a proper format, in JSON format. Those rules applied on parameter A are converted to rules applied on, on district on the layer, and those these are is applied automatically on uh, on GeoServer. This is uh, well the the um, sequence diagram that shows uh, the, that shows this. Then there are also other uh, features of the WebJS. I will go very fast. For example, the possibility to load the data uh, on the fly, uh, like uh, an external CSV or or other 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 data, and uh, extend the attribute table of a layer with uh, external values. Uh, regarding the technologies that, have, that are used in the system, it's uh, almost all open source. Uh, it's the, let's say, standard stack. You have open layers, Java, Tomcat, GeoServer, and Postgres. Uh, while the models were developed using R, Python, and MATLAB, because uh, the different partners had uh, their uh, um, different competencies on, 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 those, uh, on those languages. Uh, regarding some, well, uh, relevant technical aspects, one of the problem is that uh, that maybe is uh, common uh, for a project uh, dealing with different data is the was the, the the harmonization of the data collecting the data for example in Italy some data are incredibly hard to to get like the, the zip codes uh, problems with SRS and and so on uh, another issue was the automatization of the data ingestion procedure to be able to load everything uh, without having to manually add things to the database. Uh, well, the integration with the other uh, components and the other languages. And for the database, uh, we are actually using just plain SQL and post, uh, Postgres and PostGIS, but we are uh, considering to, you, to add the time, time scale extension to uh, speed up some queries, uh, mm, mm, some, some query that deals with, uh, with, with time. And uh, we also would like to introduce uh, a NoSQL uh, no database to uh, better manage some pre-processing uh, of the data uh, coming from the, the, the monitoring stations. Uh, the, the, the system is deployed on a, um, a, French plat a governmental French platform uh, um, for, for, sci for data science. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Uh, you said about NoSQL. You could try uh, Postgres supports uh, JSON. Yeah. You could try maybe instead of going for other technology, you could try that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, um, I, I don't have a lot of experience with JSON with uh, with Postgres. Uh, we made some some tests for for other other uh, well other projects, and uh, it seems that. Uh, <coughs> Even if it, it has support for JSON, well, the syntax is uh, sometimes not very well easy, especially to retrieve the data. 
Uh, but I think that the problem here is that of, of, uh, of performances. Like uh, if uh, uh, we have uh, uh, almost one, more than one, uh, yeah, like 100 monitoring stations that are acquiring data every 30 seconds, even if I wrote one minute, and uh, the collected parameters are like uh, 30 or, or more because there are two channels. So the amount of data is, uh, is very big. Uh, so now there is a, a pre-processing part. Basically, the data coming from those two channels are in some way uh, merged together. And uh, the data in, in, uh, that is used in Pulse is uh, aggregated. But this uh, part is uh, quite big, so I don't, we don't know if uh, uh, that the database will be able to manage uh, uh, so many, many data. That's why... We were thinking about using uh, the uh, NoSQL database for, for that. Okay. Other questions? Thinking about lunch, maybe? <laughs> okay. okay, thank, thank you. you.